academic officer. The academic officer represents students on issues relating to their course, teaching and learning facilities. The academic officer also works with over 400 course representatives, department representatives and faculty representatives to ensure that every student has the opportunity to shape how their course is taught. Hello, I'm Ellie Tucker and I'm joined by Walton White, who is running for the academic officer position. Walton, welcome to UOI. Nice to meet you. Hello. Um, so quickly, tell me um, why you are running for academic officer. Well, um, I've gone through like a year of uni and all that, and it was like, the, the sense was is that from my first year, I felt like there was a lack of community in general in all, overall the academic department. Essentially, it was like I went to my degree, you know, did my course and all that, and then went into lectures and seminars. But I just never got a sense of community when I was doing it last year. Mm -hmm. It was like I met people outside the course, but it was never inside the course and all that. Right. And of course, there was issues as well that I noticed, you know, throughout the year, you know, stuff to do with self certifying and of course, strike action, which around this time of year is always at its worst. And I feel like in terms of like productivity, you're always at your lowest when it comes to this time of year. But it just, I when it came to this year, I just thought there was a lot I really wanted to introduce. Um, maybe as academic officer, I tried to be involved with like a lot more things in general. Um, at, at the moment, I'm currently president of the History Society. And from that, I've been able to gain a bit of insight into what this role will probably entail and what I can do with it. Awesome. Okay, so um, I wanted to pick up on a point. Now, compared to the other candidates you're running against, you have a relatively few detailed policies in your manifesto. Do you think that you can really ask students to vote for you when you they don't clearly see what your stance is in a lot of important academic issues? Yeah, I, I understand it is one of those things where it's like, it is very unclear and all that. And, um, you know, hopefully as, as I go along, you know, I'll, I'll learn more on how to, you know, enact these policies and all that. Of course, um, some of them are quite vague, but I do have ideas in mind. Of course, um, I can better explain some of them right now. So like in general, with creating a great sense of community in the academic departments, it is all about um, getting in touch with societies that focus on academic events, you know, get, get better in touch with people who are, you know, working in the academic departments and overall, you know, just improving communication between stu um, students and, you know, departments, gaining that sense of community and communication. Mm -hmm. How do you propose to do that uh, specifically? Like, what uh, measures would you take to improve that communication? Well, overall, getting in touch with, like, societies, see, um, looking at their struggles, seeing what, you know, they could be doing to, you know, uh, better introduce uh, students to, you know, societies and all that, and mm -hmm. as well to do with... Um, the links between departments because i feel like a huge issue is with the societies is when it comes to the academic ones is you just have the issue of they they can do all the events they can do all the social events but they can never do the um the academic side because there's not a lot of links and there's not a lot of people you know approaching them being like you know we got a really good idea for what we could do to you know help better promote the course right um i feel like one issue i had like with um my degree was there was a lack of um I felt like there was like career prospects because they weren't better shown, mm -hmm. and I think I think it did didn't help with my motivation personally as a student because it was like I was doing my degree, but I didn't quite necessarily want to be a historian. So it was like, what can I necessarily do with you know the degree? But I feel like through better um, use of like you know academic events, linking it to societies and all that, we could probably better you know promote the capabilities. Um, of your degree and what you can do going forward. Absolutely. I was going to pick up on this, that in your manifesto, you didn't mention employability in careers. And obviously you've done that now. But is there anything else um, that you would like to comment on about the facet of the role of academic officer? Obviously, there's a lot to be doing with uh, placements, uh, liaison and industry and the funding for that. Do you have any kind of ideas about that that you would want the voting people to know about? Um, not particularly at the moment, of course. I have been thinking about it because there is a lot to consider at the moment when it comes to the different duties and all that. And there are some things that probably from my personal stance as a student hasn't yet crossed my mind. But of course, funding is very important, of course, especially when it comes to overseas students as well. That is a main priority because, of course, um, um, I saw I saw a poll in like one of the meetings where it said that, you know, this is going to get to a certain point where we're having more international students than because it does help overall with um, widening the university to a wider audience outside the UK. Mm -hmm. And these will all be things to consider and um, talk about in the role. 
and um and then yeah funding is a complete issue which um i haven't really noticed yet because um it's kind of one of those things it's like i feel like i have to get into the role to really you know understand the funding side of it and okay that makes sense i mean it might be a bit difficult for people at home to uh cons you know compared to the other two candidates who seem a bit more prepared but i understand what you're saying about getting into the role um to move on a little bit you mentioned the strikes ongoing strikes in your manifesto promising to quote introduce measures to main student maintain student engagement during the strike periods can you give me an example of the kind of measures you're suggesting to implement there so what essentially it is is of course i'm all for the strikes you know they have to happen of course i can understand the reasons behind the strikes but of course as students you know you are paying all this money to do your degree and there's and if i feel like with the striking period it's you you kind of lose a lot of your course you lose a lot of the time that you can have socializing with people in the course and um you know truly focusing on your work especially with, like student engagement a lot of student engagement just drops throughout that term mm -hmm. like even if you've got like even if you're really busy and you do focus on the course i just feel like in general you do struggle during this this odd term and um in general it's you know better preparing things for, um for students um in regards to like you know what can be done to ensure that things are prepared for students like what they can be doing in the event of strikes like what can be organized do you have any ideas what could be organized though yeah essentially like you know um little sessions that they can do between you know putting students maybe in groups and all that having them you know um pairing them off with people so they can, you know, get to talk to people on the course and they can, you know, work work individually and carry on, you know, their learning and um, their course. And it's all about really just maintaining the focus on the degree and, and yeah, in general, there's, there's a lot that I think could come to mind in the role. And I know a lot of it, I think, will be improv in all honesty when it comes to what will be introduced, but there is basic ideas in my mind of what to introduce it's just you know mm -hmm. i think it's just planning in advance you know from from the first term being like what what can we do to you know set things in motion and ensure that you know the student engagement doesn't drop it does you know maintain at an, a high level throughout and even if that means you know um creating more student groups you know having um students work together with particular students more you know to you know so they can, you know, be open and be like, you know, during the strikes, you know, do study groups and all that and just keep the focus maintained. Do you think that's actually a viable thing you can do in the role of academic officer, though? Because after all, it's the student's prerogative how they choose to work during striking periods. Um, do you think that's actually something achievable? I think it is achievable. Yeah, it's just making it an open option and um, making sure that, you know, students know it's, a, it's an available route to take. Okay. And just not leaving them in the dark about things. Okay. Uh, to push on another point of your manifesto, you talk about the self-certification system and you're saying you want to make it more accessible. Now, the current academic officer recently has been negotiating with the university about keeping it easier to access. And I think the progress has been quite positive. So from your view, what else do you think needs to be um, what, hap what else do you think needs to happen? How do you propose to achieve it? What do you think is missing at the moment? Essentially, just individualizing it, making it more of a unique platform, maybe like its own application and all that that you can that students can access via you know their university Gmail and you know better lay it out and um, and then you know work on technical measures that could be introduced to you know improve on it and as because end of the day the changes that have been implemented have already been great. Mm -hmm. I just think I just think it's carrying the train of motion in terms of improvement on the actual process. Okay. Um, why do you think self-certification is so important? Like, why is it something that we should keep valuing? Well, it's valuable in general because, you know, it's one of those things. You might not need it, you might need it, but it's always there if you need it. And um, it's valuable, you know, for students for any reason. Because, of course, there's always going to be circumstances that, you know, might prevent you from, you know, doing work doing work at a specific time, do you get I me? Mean? Or doing it at a certain point. You've got, you've got to have something there in place, you know, to, to help. To help you with your studies because you know uni can be a, a very unpredictable time like with myself it was um last term was a complete whirlwind and i did have to go home for a bit because of just um personal reasons and it was like it was all about yeah i'm um, just making sure that um 
and having stuff like that there just made me more confident in doing my degree even if I was away from the actual uni. Okay, thank you very much for your time um, and over to the green room. We're having a little bit of a break from the democracy going on over there. What are we going to do, Joe? We're going to play 